When IDOS Montreal revealed its Thief reboot, it was kind of hard not to notice that it looked like Arcane Studios' own stealth action game, Dishonored. But it's no coincidence, these two games share a complex overlapping history. Both are inspired by the same source, the original Thief games. And while some of Dishonored's developers actually worked on the Thief games back in the day, IDOS Montreal's reboot is the one that's branded with the official Thief name. The result is that Thief and Dishonored are trying to accomplish very similar things. But which one of them does them best? Let's look at four high-level goals and see which game comes out on top. First up, the creation of an authentic world. The City of Thief and Dishonored's Dunwall are both inspired by Victorian-era London. Thief takes this inspiration more literally, presenting cramped streets, smoky alleyways, and grand cathedrals. Dishonored goes further into the fantastical, with strange security devices and mechanical contraptions clinging to its architecture. Yet, it's Dishonored's city that feels more authentic. Its large, atmospheric levels are rendered with a consistent and interesting art style, instilling Dunwall with a strong sense of place. Thief looks great, but it's at the expense of an ability to render large levels. It's impossible to create a sense of place when your game is assaulting players with constant load screens. Looks aren't everything, and it's clear that the City of Thief is a poorly constructed one. Advantage? Dishonored. Next, offering creative choices to the player. Both games offer a certain range of playstyles on the stealth action spectrum. While Thief is more focused on stealth than Dishonored, IDOS Montreal did want to give players more options than the previous games. Unfortunately, exploring those options doesn't feel creative. The bits of Thief's levels that you can interact with, like flammable oil puddles or anchors for your rope arrows, are clearly hand-placed by designers. You never really feel like you're designing your own solution, just following someone else's one. It's easier for Dishonored to make players feel creative because it supports a wider range of abilities on that stealth action spectrum. And you have supernatural powers. But even the basic first-person moveset allows you to engineer clever routes to your objectives. It's more organic, inventive, and more satisfying. Advantage, Dishonored. Now let's talk about the cities themselves and how they descend into chaos over time. Both the City of Thief and Dishonored City of Dunwall are beset by plagues, tyranny, and dark forces behind the curtain. If you kill a lot of people in Dishonored, you're going to make things worse for the city. You'll start seeing more swarms of plague rats and sickly citizens. Continuing with this violent approach completely changes the tone of the finale, with a dark, apocalyptic atmosphere and little sense of hope that Dunwall can ever recover. It's a subtle, clever evolution over the entire course of Dishonored's playtime. Thief's plot implies its own city's hardships will manifest in a more immediate manner. The downtrodden poor are sick of working for the man, and they eventually spark a violent uprising against the city's elite ruling class. The idea was to show that with gradual changes to Thief's hub world over repeat visits, but there are so few characters in each area that it doesn't feel like the city is racked with civil unrest. It feels more like you're going for a nice moonlit walk. Advantage, Dishonored. Last but not least, let's talk about first person immersion. Thief and Dishonored are both immersive simulations, a subgenre spawned by Looking Glass Studios that continues into other games like the Bioshock series. These immersive sims place great importance on creating a strong sense of self in the way that you inhabit the body of a protagonist in first person. Thief goes for complete body awareness. Garrett's hands are on screen at all times and animate with every single interaction with the game world. But the need to ensure that everything animates correctly results in a stilted and clunky first person experience where control is regularly taken away from you, and your ability to climb over even small things is inconsistent at best. Dishonored doesn't animate everything, but it also never takes control away from the player. You're free to jump and climb wherever you like. Though it's not as realistic as Thief, it's far more consistent, which means you can immerse yourself in what is possible with your moveset, as opposed to figuring out what isn't possible in Thief. Do we even need to say it? Alright, advantage, Dishonored. So although Thief and Dishonored offer slightly different power fantasies, they still strive to create immersive first-person experiences in authentic worlds, whilst offering creative choice through the use of their systems and toolsets. But it's Dishonored that accomplishes these goals with far greater confidence in itself and in its players, ultimately proving that having the Thief name doesn't necessarily make for a great Thief game. The victor? Dishonored.